Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an Australian sci-fi drama television series called The Unlisted. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. In the opening scene, a bunch of middle school students are running down an empty alleyway. Two adults follow them closely, but lose them around a subway track. The children hide behind a wall, alone and scared. Somewhere else in Australia lives a family of six, named the Sharma family. The Sharma twins, Drew and Cal, are identical, but have entirely different personalities. They are usually separated as the brother who wears glasses and the one who doesn't. One morning, the elder brother Drew dreams of someone drilling his teeth and wakes up scared. His twin laughs, making fun of Drew's unreasonable fear of dentists. The family is busy preparing for the Diwali celebration. Their grandmother prepares them breakfast before assigning them individual tasks to be done by the end of the day. Recently, Drew hacked into his school's database to see his test results early. This got him into a lot of trouble, but his parents allow him to use his computer after a week-long restriction. Cal huffs, knowing that Drew has been using his phone as usual for the past week. In the following scene, they go to school and meet a mutual friend, Chloe. As they talk, their entire class is called for a compulsory dental checkup, assigned by the Global Child Initiative Program. A classmate named Tim runs away, claiming that his parents do not approve of the checkup. Drew, who dreads the idea of dental checkups, asks Cal to take his place. Cal wears Drew's glasses and goes in a second time. The doctors do not suspect him and perform the same procedure on him twice. In class, their teacher, Mr. Park, surprises them with a test which is also set by the Global Child Initiative Program. A representative of the said program, Miss Biggs, comes to the class as the invigilator. A few minutes into the test, the students freeze out of the blue. Drew is the only normal one in the class and is confused out of his mind. Miss Biggs, however, seems to know what's going on. She collects the report about the condition of the children and doesn't notice that Drew is still moving. Some seconds later, they return to their normal selves and continue the test as if nothing happened. After the class, Drew tries asking Cal why he froze, but Cal doesn't know what he is talking about. This is followed by a series of strange incidents, like Cal cycling really fast without realizing and breaking a glass of ghee with his bare hands. Drew repeatedly tries telling him something is off, but Cal thinks he is being dramatic. Later, the brothers are outside a store. When Tim comes running to them, he is the same guy who refused the dental checkup that day. He tells them to not trust anyone and be careful before running away. The twins notice a black van following Tim and decide to pursue them both, but they cannot keep up with the car and eventually lose them. In the evening is the Diwali celebration, but the guys are too occupied to enjoy the festival. They call Tim's parents, who are just as worried. Suddenly, a group of men kidnaps the couple before ending the call. The brothers think of calling the police, but remember that Tim asked them to not trust anyone. They also do not want to tell their parents, because that would put them at risk of being kidnapped. Then, we see the students who we saw in the opening scene. They are also running away from the agents of the program. The agents monitor the entire city's CCTV footage to look for the kids. The next day at school, the twins' class is made to take a physical test. In it, the students show exceptional athletic abilities that are too advanced for their age. Except for Drew, who struggles to keep up with his classmates. Miss Biggs notices this and calls him to the sick bay for a test. Drew immediately changes places with Cal and makes him go with the teacher. Miss Biggs takes a look at his gums with the excuse of checking his throat. Cal realizes that during the dental checkup, they must have been planted with some kind of bug that is causing him and the others to act weird. But since Drew skipped the test, he remained normal. <laughs> These brothers are slow on the uptake. I figured that out like three paragraphs ago. The brothers secretly use their teacher's computer and find a database full of the students' records. It contains everything about the kids, including their live location. Since Cal has two implants on either side of his jaw, the information about him gathered by the implant is also used as Drew's. Meanwhile, Tim is labeled as the unlisted one because he never went through the process. Somewhere else, the other group running from the organization finds a working walkie-talkie in the trash bin. Since they cannot communicate through their phones, they decide to use the device. At home, the brothers also get themselves radio phones to communicate. They research the Global Child Initiative program and find out an organization named the Infinity Group is behind the idea. 
To check the phone's range, Cal goes outside and sees a vehicle in front of Tim's house. The agents see him and chase him down the road, but Cal manages to escape. As he and Drew talk on the phone, they pick up the other group's frequency and hear their voice. They try to communicate with the group and gain their trust by telling them how they knew about the program. The leader of the other group, Rose, calls them to meet the next day at a hill. Rose and her group steal lunchboxes from people at the park. They know they cannot go on for long in such conditions and are desperate for outside help. In contrast, the Sharma boys are being fed in abundance by their grandmother. At school, they play Kabaddi, but are placed on two different teams. Because of Cal's newfound strength, he easily wrestles the other team. But this also makes the agents suspicious of him. Drew asks him to lose the next round, so they won't be caught. Cal reluctantly does as told, but is enraged because of the loss. A teacher's pet named Regan records him kicking a bin and making it fly a few yards away. She decides to show it to Miss Biggs later. After school, the brothers bribe their elder sister to cover for them while they go to meet Rose and her friends. When they finally reach the location, they find no one around. All of a sudden, someone puts bags over their heads in an attempt to kidnap them, but against Cal's strength, they are proven weak. It turns out they are not the agents, but Rose and her friends. They wanted to abduct the guys to make sure they are not with the rival group. During the struggle, Rose's friend Jacob gets hurt. He and Cal stay at the park to make sure the other group isn't bluffing, while the others go to the hideout, where Drew tells them everything. The group reveals that they also didn't get the dental implants because of some disturbance, which is why they are unlisted and are on the agent's hit list. They do not know what exactly the motive of the program is, but they are sure some powerful people are trying to control the youngsters. Drew tells them about Tim and his parents, who were abducted, which only makes the group feel worse. Drew senses their worry and assures them that their parents are alright, even though he is unsure himself. Back in the park, Jacob and Cal share samosas and bond over their favorite sports team. Jacob is still in a lot of pain because of his leg injury, but feels at peace for the first time since all of this started. Drew and Rose arrive an hour later, and the group goes their separate ways. The next day in class, the teacher's pet, Regan, is made the monitor and is tasked to tell the agents about any suspicious activity happening at school. She shows Miss Biggs the video of Cal kicking the bin, but instead of being mad, Miss Biggs is happy about the strength that he has gained. The students are made to take yet another physical test, but this time they are controlled using the dental implants. Miss Biggs makes them walk and turn in a certain way to check their coordination. Drew follows the others and manages to hide the fact that he is not being controlled. Suddenly, everything goes back to normal, and the ones who were controlled do not remember anything. On their way back home, the twins are approached by Rose. They quickly rush to the hideout to see that Jacob's injury has gotten worse. He has a fever because of the infection that will surely get worse if not treated immediately. To help him, Drew and Cal go to their Aunt Maya's clinic. They plan to stall her and steal some antibiotics, but she catches on to their strange behavior. When she calls them out for it, they have no choice but to ask her for help. Still, they only tell her about the injured kid, not about the Infinity Group. The three of them come to the hideout to be attacked by Rose and the others. They think the twins betrayed them, but the boys quickly explain the situation. Maya is shocked to see the condition the kids are living in. She takes care of Jacob's injury first, before asking the kids what is going on. They assure her they are doing the right thing, but refuse to tell her what it is about. When the guys return home, they are worried about their aunt. They think her life is at risk because she helped them. But then, they notice her talking to the Infinity Group's agents and getting into their car. The guys suspect she is one of them, but are sure she wouldn't put her nephew's lives in danger. In the following scene, we see some men entering the hideout that Rose and the group are in. They quickly pack their things and rush outside before being caught. Drew doesn't get a hold of them through the walkie-talkie and goes to see if they are alright. Meanwhile, Cal goes to school as usual. Drew secretly enters the hideout and sees killed insects on the floor. However, the group is nowhere to be seen. The construction workers spot him and chase him away. He figures that the group is probably safe and had to hide because of the workers. At school, three agents from the Infinity Group stay in the classroom throughout the lecture. But something more strange happens. When Tim returns to school as if nothing ever happened, the guys try talking to him during recess, but he dismisses the conversation. After school, Drew returns home and wants Cal to join because the agents might notice the implant's location and Drew's location are different. 
but Cal decides to stay at school for football practice. During warm-up, the coach asks Cal to call Tim. Cal runs to his home and calls him outside. However, Tim seems to not know anything about the practice. He claims that his parents are on a business trip, so he has to stay home. Before Cal can ask him what is wrong, an agent calls him from inside the house. She comes to the window and scans Cal, asking where his brother is. Cal panics and pretends to call Drew before running away, but the interaction makes an impression on the agent. Cal goes home and tells Drew everything that happened. They go to the hideout again to check if Rose and the group have returned. Thankfully, they find the group outside. It turns out they were in a hidden room that they found inside the sewage system. They go to the said room that looks like it was used by someone in the past. It is not the ideal living environment, but is better than the previous arrangement. A while later, the twins return home. Cal suddenly stops and his eyes glow blue. It is clear that he is being controlled, but Drew doesn't notice it. They finally come back home and enjoy dinner with their family. Maya is also there and is worried about the kids. In the last scene, she reveals that she has been hired by the Infinity Group as a medical officer. The twins look at each other in confusion, unsure if they can trust her anymore. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.